Hello Pythonistas! Welcome to Pythonista Geek Channel. So today we will have a brief introduction about what is an object oriented programming in Python. So this word is there correct object oriented programming. It is very famous word and it is used in many other programming languages. But we are going to be more specific with Python. But the concepts which we are going to learn here can be applied to all the other languages also. So no worries. Now to start with, first let us see what is object oriented programming. It is actually a programming paradigm that uh, provides a means for structured programming uh, so that the behaviors are bundled together into individual objects. So in simple way, what I can say you is uh, when we are writing a function, we have user defined function and built in function, right? So, what will it do? Uh, built in function means we can just use them whenever needed. User defined function means we are defining a function on our own and then use them whenever needed. The same way in Python, we can create a data type like user defined data type. We can say this object oriented programming concept, I can easily say it as user defined data type like list, um, dictionaries, tuples and set, these are all built in data type available. So all these data types have some properties within them, like they can append or they can get deleted. All these are some of the properties available for those data types. If it is a set, for set alone, there is a property for finding the union, intersection and difference. So like this, they have specific behaviors which are bundled together and form as a one big data type so that we are using them whenever required with the help of the methods or the um, what or the variables uh, with the help of methods or the variables we are trying to access them whenever needed the same way if we want to create our own data type where we know what are the behaviors what are the methods or what are the functions available inside that data type at that particular point of time, this object oriented programming is entering into us. So, uh, in simple words, I can say it is a user defined data type. And for creating a user defined data type or for object oriented programming, there are two things which are required. One is the properties, other one is the behavior. Like I can say, properties is nothing but the variables with which these data types can be accessed. And behaviors are nothing but the methods uh, like what are all the functions which they are having. Uh, properties means it will be just name, uh, age, address which are static basically. Behavior means it is a function. It is a set of instruction together, binded together to form that particular behavior for that particular data type. So these both together form an object oriented programming's approach to be easy. Now, there is something other called as procedural programming. Actually, programming languages are divided into two, which is object oriented programming and procedural programming. So, we now consider what are object oriented programming and when to use them. So, what is procedural programming? Procedural programming is nothing but it is just a blocks of code which will be executed in a particular order. Just giving instructions to the computer. Till now, whatever we did is just a kind of procedural programming. We are just giving instructions to our computer and our computer is just blindly following the instruction. We did not give them any specific structure for that particular program. So, this is called as procedural programming. Just from the start till the end, the program will be executed line by line. This is mainly a procedural programming method. Now coming to the next, in object oriented programming, we will be covering the following concepts in the future, which are nothing but we will cover what is a class, what is objects, what is abstraction, polymorphism, encapsulation and inheritance. So these are all the main topics which we will be covering in future of object oriented programming languages. Now coming to the advantage. So what is an advantage of object oriented programming is we can reuse the code multiple times. Whenever we need, we can just put that. As I said, it is it has become a data type itself, right? So we can use that data type whenever needed inside our program. And we can also inherit. The inheritance property will make our code to be very short and easy to maintain. And if you want to modify something, it is very easy to modify with the variables which is actually there in our 
built in um, data type so that it will be modified throughout the program and the security is also very high over here object oriented programming language and the cost of development is also low coming to the disadvantages the sizes of the program will be very much bigger when compared to procedural programming because we are having so much syntax so much structures to be defined in an object oriented programming it is uh, required a lot of efforts to create so we need to create with lot of efforts that is also a very big disadvantage i can say and the these are slower than the pro other programs because we are uh, creating the data type itself always built in things are much faster because most of the built in data types or built in functions all these things will, will be coded in python uh, basically in c language they have coded and that they have uh, joined it with python so they work very faster than the one which we are writing on our own in python language itself and it takes time to get used to it so if uh, one person is saying you to write a code it is not that we cannot write that particular code without using object oriented programming we can always write a code very easily without using object oriented programming so when we have an easier option it is always going to take time for us to go and sit in the toughest option but once then it is very easy to execute them and very easy to handle them that is the main idea of object oriented programming now i hope that you have got an idea of what is an object oriented programming and moving further in the next next videos uh, in the next video we can see definitions of all the things like classes objects encapsulation polymorphism all these things with some real time examples that will be covered in the next video and moving further we can see in one video one thing how to use it if it is a class how can we define a class what are the types of class all these things one by one we can cons we can cover all the object oriented programming concept gradually that's it friends this is shravanti shining off from you bye bye